Hey everyone, so what does the first genetic information available tell us about the monkeypox infection or outbreak that is currently going on around the world? My name is Dr. Mikolaj Rasek of Mero Genomics and before we get started I want to let you know we have a, another COVID Q&A event coming up. Please still stay till the end of the video to find out how you can get free tickets to that. And uh, also wanted to let you know we have another event going on. We'll let you know details about that also at the end of the of the video. So right, let's get started and give you a little bit of background on this monkeypox. What's going on? First, I want to tell you how rare of an event this is uh, that we are witnessing right now. So monkeypox itself was first isolated only in 1958. It was isolated from a couple monkeys that were shipped uh, for research purposes and they fell ill. And uh, that's where the virus derives its name from. Although that's a misnomer, the actual reservoir of this virus are rodents or rats. So what I mean by reservoir, that's basically the type of animals that naturally infect, uh, are infected by this virus. Uh, typically those are rats but the only other animals known to have been infected are squirrels prairie dogs monkeys and then of course humans so the first human case new that we have known has only been isolated and confirmed in 1970 uh, from a child from a Democratic Republic of Congo and since then and that's basically central and western africa is where this virus is endemic it rarely rarely in history has exited africa there in its entire history there's only been two outbreaks outside of africa and total of six cases plus one additional transmission so let's go through them the first time this has ever been observed was only in 2003 which until now was also the most serious outbreak this is a very unusual uh, story because what happened there is these rats were being imported from Ghana and they were uh, to the United States and they were allowed to co-inhabit with prairie dogs which were then subsequently sold to people as pets and they ended up infecting a whole bunch of people up to 50 pe around 50 people got infected with the monkeypox uh, at the time since then the only other cases outside of Africa was one in 2018 where a uh, person was infected in Nigeria and brought it to Israel. Another single case was person who was infected in Nigeria in 2019 and brought it to Singapore. And then three more cases between 2018 and 19. Same story, infected in Nigeria, brought it to the UK. And that's where we have one case of uh, human to human transmission in the UK. After that, two more, two more cases. One was an outbreak in May of 2021 where a person was infected in Nigeria and then subsequently infected their family members, which was three people infected in the UK. And then finally was in, I believe, again, summer of 2021, another imported case from Nigeria to the United States. And the, the recent uh, genomic sequence analysis shows that that is indeed how this virus current outbreak of 2020 is related to those cases. So it's that same virus and, and that was infecting these people from Nigeria. So in a way, that's actually a good news for, for us. And the reason why is because you can think of the, the monkeypox, there's two types. One of them is more deadly than the other one. So the Western strain is less deadly it has a approximately fatality rate of between one to three percent and that's the one that is now currently causing an outbreak so it's the milder version that that is causing an outbreak and that's just been confirmed with genome sequencing the first such data was recently released by a bunch of researchers from portugal and this is very rapidly growing on a daily basis so once again we are collecting huge amount of virus genome sequencing just even today at least two have been reported one from france and i believe another one from denmark so we, and what it also tells us that this current outbreak where almost 200 people i believe have been already confirmed to be infected by this monkeypox it all appears to come from a single strain it's a single strain that has caused this outbreak 
because all of those cases, as when you look at their genomes, they're all clustered together. All right, so at the moment, there's no treatment for monkeypox. So what's causing it? Why now, right? What's going on? And no one knows the answer. So obviously we'll be looking at what, what might be the emerging theories published in scientific literature. The one that it currently comes out is that possibly what might be causing it is the fact that previously we had natural immunity against this virus because of vaccination against smallpox but smallpox has been eradicated it's the only virus that we have actually eradicated from existence and we no longer vaccinate against that so this is where we might be losing this protection over time against this monkeypox so that might be that's one proposed theory of course it's perhaps not a surprise that it, that we seeing this outbreak now because obviously we are also just went through a pandemic so collectively our immune system is a bit, a bit perturbed by by the SARS-CoV-2 virus pandemic that we just that we just went through so perhaps that might actually play a role as to why we're seeing more of the, more of these cases right now so however monkeypox is currently has no cure there is no treatment for it so what happens is the good news though is that Typically, you are not expected to be infectious unless you have symptoms. So if you're asymptomatic, you're not expected to be infectious to others. What happens is that um, you're supposed to, if you have been exposed, you're supposed to monitor your temperature a um, couple times a day for up to 21 days because that's the incubation period, time period of this virus. And, um, and, um, mm, if you've been exposed to um, what is would be defined to a high risk scenario so that's if you've actually come into contact with the lesions of, of infected persons or their bodily fluids including respiratory droplets then the, such person might consider vaccination against smallpox and if uh, such vaccination were to take within four days post such exposure that might actually prevent the disease development and that's data according to CDC and if if, uh, if vaccination were to take place within 14 days post exposure then that might reduce the severity of the disease um, so that's one po possible option based on the UK patients um, data there's total seven UK patients that have been treated in the past in those years of 2018 and 2019 and based on that information those individuals were hospitalized between 10 to 39 days and they develop between 10 to 150 lesions okay so if you are infected and you have lesions of course you're supposed to isolate you're supposed to wear a mask and you're supposed to cover all your lesions as much as you can because of course that's the dangerous uh, part where you might be causing an infection until those lesions basically crust over and naturally fall off and new skin is developed underneath that's when you know you would be out of the woods from from the pro from the problems mm, okay so what else i can tell you now let's maybe um look back to, um, well, actually, what about the virus itself? So the virus itself is um, about twice as big as coronavirus. So about 200 to 250 nanometers. Coronavirus is about half of that size, 100 nanometers. If you're wondering what nanometer is, one nanometer, I believe, is about one millionth of a millimeter. So if you're wondering how small coronaviruses are, we're talking about what one ten thousandth of a millimeter so the, these are super super tiny structures it's based its envelope is based out of lipid and proteins so it has a structure it looks like a brick basically and it's made out of a lipoproteins so they seem to be robust and its genetic material is different than coronaviruses in coronaviruses it's a single strand of rna these viruses monkeypox they are linear double-stranded DNA so similar to, obviously we, that's like our own genetic material is a double-stranded DNA as well also linear so th there's that similarity so slightly different make makeup than 
what uh, we can expect from coronaviruses, I thought maybe I'll mention that for com comparison. Now, when it comes to genetic information, what, as I already mentioned, um, this is looks like it's the out current outbreak is from a single source that is now related to all those cases imported from Nigeria in 2018 and 2019. Again, that's a good thing because that confirms it's it's the Western clade of the virus, which is less deadly. So that's a relief. And however, it's about 50 mutations um, unrelated to current outbreaks. So that's that's quite a lot. It's more than would be expected from uh, from natural mutagenesis. So although there are some interesting emerging theories as to why that might might be. And um, another really interesting information that has been published by the group of researchers from Portugal, they also mentioned that they are already observing microevolution of the in the current outbreak. So even in the current outbreak, despite the fact that it's so recent, there's already new branches, new branches uh, forming, basically meaning new mutations are being observed uh, amongst. Uh, amongst the viruses that are currently in, infecting people and in the current outbreak. So uh, yeah, that's probably everything I can tell you right now in terms of the new genetic information available. What can we do? I mentioned vaccinations. The only other options possible that we could be considering is maybe antivirals. However, there is no approved antivirals right now for treatment of this particular virus so i hope you like this information i have so far but now let me tell you about the upcoming events so we have another covid 19 q a number 10 i believe so we're still going strong with these and so if you want to get a free ticket the first 10 subscribers to our newsletter will send you a free ticket to to that the description to the subscription is below in the description <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful to say and um, these are a lot of fun basically we collage a bunch of questions and we answer them and after that it's just about 10 questions and after that it's an open mic so we take questions from the audience so it's a lot of fun it's very interactive and we want it to be like that so that uh, anyone is welcome and uh, another event that we have is a money mind dna event this is a uh, uh, holistic proactive well-being event where i get together with two other experts and we one financial expert and one mental health expert and we talk about different areas of how you can protect yourself to, to the best of your abilities in order to make sure you can lead as good and healthy lifestyle as possible so that's financial well-being and mental health well-being as well as physical well-being which is my area of of information but with that twist where I have to talk about DNA mapping and how that can be used to your benefit as well so next one is there we have another one coming up so uh, and we specifically target business owners for that one so this can be um, offered to employees in order to make sure that um, people can <laughs> recover from the trauma of what's going on enough right we all can agree uh, on that so check it out uh, registration is is free to that for that as well all right if you like this video please share please give us a like uh, leave a comment and by the way thank you to everyone who has uh, given us super thanks donations if you would like us uh, uh, like to support us in that way that's definitely welcome and uh, we look forward to making further content for you in this manner Bye, everyone.